فيا أيها القاري به متمسكا مجلا له في كل حال مبجلا Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Great to have you with us. My name is Khalid Abu Shafi'. Uh, today, inshallah, we are going to go through the uh, uh, second video for Makharij. And inshallah, for uh, just to mention that uh, the podcast of the audio MP3 will stop for the time being because the uh, chapter of Makharij requires explanation with video presentation. Uh, so we are going to go through the uh, uh, the Makhari chapter uh, through explanation uh, with the video presentation and also you can download through iTunes and uh, it is also a podcast uh, or a vodcast if you want to say uh, you can download it from the uh, iTunes and from the website so we are going to go through the first Makhari we mentioned there are principal Makhari and there are five uh, makharij and uh, points of articulation. There are five principles. Uh, number one, uh, we mentioned that is makharij al-jawf, which represent the oral cavity and the throat cavity, which we are going to explain later on in this uh, video. The second one was the throat, uh, which represent the six letters of Arabic language, such as ayn and ha and kha and ghayn and ha. And uh, the next part is makhraj al-lisan, which is the tongue, and whatever inside the mouth represents the movement of the tongue around the, uh, the teeth, the roof of the mouth, uh, touching the teeth, and so on. And the next one is the lips, and uh, the last makhraj is the makhraj of the nasal cavity, which is called makhraj al-khayshum, or makhraj uh, the nostrils, where the ghuna comes from. So... Uh, as you know uh, that there are so many letters in Arabic language now how do they uh, distribute through the uh, part of the body that uh, uh, the sounds exit and the sound comes uh, from uh, these points of articulations uh, number one the ulama have decided that knowing this makhraj is very important and we need to go through it because we cannot recite the Qur'an without knowing where is the makhraj of uh, uh, the letter such as a zal or a dha. If we don't differentiate the makhraj, then we could pronounce the same zay and dha and zal would be all za. Uh, so the makhraj, uh, knowing the makhraj is a very important, as Imam al-Jazari uh, say in his poetry, إِذْ وَاجِبٌ عَلَيْهِمُ مُحَتَّمُ قَبْلَ الشُّرُوعِ أولا أن يعلموا مخارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصح اللغات So it is a duty, it is a compulsory upon all the Muslims to know at least the minimum requirement of this tajweed and among this tajweed it is مخارج الحروف the sifat, the qualities and the attributes so they can pronounce properly the Quran al-Kareem So مخارج الحروف there are 17 makhraj. As we mentioned, there are five principles, but there are 17 makhraj, and each makhraj of these 17 has their own points of articulations. Now we are going to talk about this principle makhraj. How do we know the makhraj, first of all? So the ulama mentioned that if you bring uh, the letter and make, uh, uh, make the letter sakin, such as ab, and make a fatha, or a damma or a kasra, probably kasra or a fatha, that's the ulama mention, and say ab. And whatever the sound ends, uh, then the, that uh, movement of the last part of the body, that is the makhraj. So, if, for example, if I want to know where is the makhraj of looking at this uh, uh, diagram of this uh, drawing of makhraj al jawf, we see that the sound hits and vibrates through uh, when it comes the air produced from the lungs and goes up through the throat and then comes uh, through the roof of the mouth between the mouth the roof of the mouth and the tongue and then uh, the sound is produced so if it stops here then produces the letters of the throat if it stops here the qaf and the kaf if it's here then the jim and the sheen and the ya if it's here then the mim and so on now when the we say this makhraj is muqaddar and estimated it is not a point 
the ulama mention because it passes through all these area and that's why it's called muqaddar means estimated it is not really a fixed point and that's why we have these three letters number one is the alif with a sukun preceded with a fatha such as qa ba ta and waw sakin preceded with a dhamma such as qu fu su and ya sakina preceded with a kasra such as fi bi and so this alif and waw and ya sakin preceded with similar fatha with the origin fatha fatha dhamma kasra or waw sakin and ya sakin only they call them uh, the letters of mad but they mad lean preceded with the fatha such as Quraysh uh, uh, the ya sakin preceded with the fatha ray raish or waw sakin preceded with fatha jawf as you mean makhraj al jawf khawf uh, saw uh, so these are the letters of mad the let the, their makhraj would be uh, muqaddar it is not fixed point but it goes makhraj al jawf between the throat and between the mouth the makhraj al jawf and the letters and how to pronounce how to how to know the makhraj and the point of articulation as we know and as i have mentioned at the beginning this makhraj it's called uh, estimated it is muqaddar it is not muhaqqaq which is it is not a fixed point to a part of the body of the mouth or the throat but it is that empty space which exists between the throat and the mouth the uh, which is this area here throat of cavity and the oral cavity and it is not the nasal cavity and why i mention this because this is one of the common mistakes when someone try to imitate uh, a shaykh or a qari and start to read quran and say أعوذ بالله من الشيطان and using that nasal مخرج. Now this is a common mistake. Even the Imam al-Jazari mentioned used to mention in his book and the ulama they say حروف مد للهواء تنتهي. There are letters ends where the air ends. It is not where the nose or which is not at the throat. It is that space where the air is. It is there what resides the letters of med, but it's not in it is not in the nose. So, and the nasal cavity, for example, it is for the gunna. So, if we say, for example, قان, قان, instead of قال, and how do I get rid of that? I just try to practice and close my uh, nostrils and my nose like this, putting my fingers there and say قال, قال. And if I if I have that problem and I say, for example, قال, I feel that I blocked the, uh, the nostrils and I blocked the nasal cavity. I did not let the air coming from there and I realized that I'm trying to do it from there. So this is a common mistake in reading Quran. So try to avoid it by knowing this is the makhraj. So if you read Quran, do not use the nostrils for the med. So the letters of med briefly, uh, as I mentioned, there are alif sakina preceded with a fatha. Ya sakina preceded with a kasra and waw sakina preceded with a dhamma or maddulin which are the two letters waw and ya preceded waw and ya sakin preceded with a fatha such as jawf and quraish and uh, or khawf uh, I gave the example because jawf is there and uh, the last thing I would like to mention that the letter of the alif sakin it is according to the letter preceded for example if I say قال, 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 so the alif is مفخم, it is a heavy because of the qaf. So whenever the letter is heavy, you make the letter alif qaf, uh, the letter alif uh, uh, of mad heavy. But if it is uh, empty mouth, slight, uh, light, then you make it uh, light and empty mouth. For example, you would say جاء, you wouldn't say جاء, you wouldn't say Ba, and you wouldn't say, like so, some people say, Taba, Taba, Tabara, Taba, Ta, Ta. So the letter of Khusa, Vartin, Qiz, Kha, Sad, Ta, 
Bad, Rain, and Za. We will see them later on in the qualities of the letters. Jazakum Allahu Khairan for listening. Subscribe to iTunes and you will find also this video there. Insha'Allah. Jazakum Allahu Khairan wa barakallahu fikum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ملابس أنوار من التاج والحلاق